And if today's march is anything like the turnout yesterday in Oakland, law enforcement could be in for a busy afternoon. Take a look at this footage in Oakland. They had to deal with a group of protesters who delayed a military cargo ship from departing for nearly nine hours. <clears throat> the protesters claiming the ship was carrying weapons to Israel, but U.S. authorities have not confirmed that. And it comes as we see these massive turnouts in places like London. You've seen these pictures, guys. Tens of thousands taking to the streets. Another London protest is expected to begin in just hours. And finally, I'll be out in today's march here in D.C. later this afternoon, and it'll be a chance for those protesters to stand right in front of the White House and shout their message accusing President Biden of genocide for funding the uh, Israel's attack into Gaza. However, the president won't be there, guys. He'll be at his beach house in Rehoboth. <laughs> Organizasyon heyetinin bizi ayırdığı alanda durursak bu arkadaşlar polise taş atmak ve benzeri şeyler yanlış. Çünkü polis de asker de hepsi Gazze'ye gidip savaşmak ister ve zamanı gelince de gidecek. Vermetçik Gazze'ye. <gülüyor> Several hundred people defied a ban on pro-Palestinian rallies and took to the streets of Berlin on Wednesday evening. According to the police, more than 60 officers were wounded by stones, flaming liquids and acts of rebellion. There is no information on injuries amongst the demonstrators. 174 people were arrested after the rally, 65 who are under criminal investigation. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz calls on the authorities on Thursday morning to prevent demonstrations that threaten to turn into anti-Semitic rallies. Outside the International Court of Justice in The Hague, a pro-Palestinian peaceful demonstration demanded consequences for Israeli leaders. We wanted to let the ICC uh, know that we uh, support the people in Gaza and that we want that Netanyahu one day comes to this court to be punished here. A pro-Israel rally in Athens demanded justice for the thousands of innocent people murdered and the immediate release of the hostages held by Hamas. It's the first popular demonstration of support for Tel Aviv in Greece since the Hamas attacks on the 7th of October. In Athens, around 10,000 people gathered in solidarity with the Palestinians. And hold our beautiful country, beautiful Palestinians. Let's shift our focus to Bangladesh, where two people were killed in clashes between anti-government protesters and the police. Dozens have been injured on the first day of the three-day protest by the opposition that is demanding the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The main opposition party, Bangladesh Nationalist Party, called for the three-day road blockade. This was in response to clashes between party supporters and police over the weekend, in which a policeman and a BNP youth leader were killed and over 100 people were injured. 
In the days leading up to the 28th of October protests, the main opposition pa uh, party, Bangladesh Nationalist Party, claimed that over 1,200 of its leaders and activists were arrested. Protests on Saturday in Dhaka are reported to be one of the largest demonstrations in the country. The Bangladesh opposition party is demanding the resignation of Prime Minister in order to allow elections in January to be held under a neutral caretaker government. The opposition has accused the police of acting at the behest of the government. Condemning the deaths of two of its supporters, it accused Sheikh Hasina of giving a license to the police to kill. The Prime Minister has been in power since 2009, overseeing years of strong economic growth. However, this time around, she faces increasing criticism of a poor human rights record and crackdowns on free speech and dissent. Accusations of vote rigging and the suppression of the opposition barred elections in 2014 and 2018. While the Bangladesh government continues to deny these accusations, it is under pressure from Western countries to keep elections more transparent. Even the United States has said it will restrict visas for Bangladeshis who undermine the democratic process. Botas. A 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake struck the Atacama coast of central Chile at 9.33 local time on October 31, 2023. It was recorded by Chile's Centro Sismologico National. It was a strong and shallow earthquake. The agency is reporting the quake was at a depth of 28 miles. The Quimbo's mayor said the quake lasted 40 to 45 seconds. Power and water supply outages were reported. According to the USGS, the epicenter was located 63.7 miles W of Valen, Atacama, and 89.6 miles NNW of La Serena, Coquimbo, Chile. Eighteen thousand people are estimated to have felt strong tremors, sixty-two thousand moderate, and eight hundred forty-one thousand mild. Hello, don't see us supposed to piss up themselves. The USGS has issued a green alert for economic damage. It has less chance of loss of life and damage. <laughs> Overall, the population of the region lives in structures that are earthquake resistant, although weak structures exist. Recent earthquakes in the area have created secondary hazards such as landslides that can cause damage. at 510 folks in Jamaica are on edge after a 5.4 magnitude earthquake rocks Kingston. The quake yesterday prompted people to run from buildings, food and other items just tumbled right off the shelves of grocery stores. Take a look at the inside of this one. Bottles all over the floor. Now officials say no deaths or severe damage has been reported, thankfully. But small earthquakes are pretty common around Jamaica, but large ones are rare. The devastating Port Royal earthquake happened back in 1692. A portion of the town there sank into the sea after that quake.